So tell us about your Something Strange and Deadly series. So the Something Strange and Deadly series follows Eleanor Fitt, a 16-year-old who lives in 1876 Philadelphia, and when her brother is kidnapped by a necromancer and his army of dead, she has no choice but to join forces with some 19th century Ghostbusters to get him back. So you, you sort of combine some different genres, like historical fiction and supernatural. Yeah, maybe too many. I think sometimes people are like, what is it? Oh, and it's YA YA as well. YA, yeah, so it's YA, and there's definitely with The Walking Dead, you have the paranormal aspect, because there's also demons and mummies and things like that. Um, There's some gothic elements to it, because you have ghosts and seances. There's the historical aspect of 1876, steampunk, because there's gadgets. It's way too much. Now that I'm saying it all, it's like, (laughs) what have I created? A Frankenstein of a book. Oh, but um, so we were talking about this off cam- off camera that the line for your book signing was so long they had to shut it down at some point and You're sort of cut things off. You can't say these things. <laughs> I, it still doesn't feel real to me. Yeah, how does I'm, that I'm, how does that feel? I, I actually might cry. So <laughs> whew, <sighs> don't edit that out. I want them to see me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. It's, I, up until this morning or one, eight, one o'clock when they opened the doors, I was still convinced that it wasn't, that there was going to be no one. Like, people kept saying, it's going to be a big line, I'm going to be waiting in line, look at the line, and I was like, until it happens and I see it, I won't believe it, and yeah, I don't have, I don't, if this is new for me and amazing, it's amazing. I can't believe people want to read my book like that, so. And now, you have a, a very interesting background, especially for an author. You were a marine biologist. I was. I used to cut open sharks for a living. Um, I actually did my master's research in the Arctic, in the Arctic Circle. So I used to do my um, field work up there, living on sea ice. They actually did a Dirty Jobs episode about oh, us. Really? I'm not oh, on cool. it because I was the lowest on the totem pole and they made uh, me go home. The Discovery Channel wouldn't pay for me, but oh. everyone else got to do it. I know, it was like two passing <laughs> ships and it was sad, but yes, that was the old days. Um, science taught me how to be really self-motivated and how to work on my own time and get things done without a boss. And that right. is sort of the that's same. Very that's sort of key. You can't write a book because you have without having a lot of yeah. self-discipline. So. And you also have a very active blog where, especially, you give a lot of writing advice. And you know, I, I was looking, reading your blog. I how do you find the time to, to do all of that? Because <laughs> it's, so it's weird it's a you lot. say that because I feel like I'm pretty lazy and like I don't do nearly <laughs> enough with my time. Um, <laughs> I, I actually do feel that way, so thanks, yay, <laughs> to the rest of the world, I seem productive. Um, I don't know, it, writing about writing, I love talking about story and, and craft, um, so it seemed natural to write about it as well, and then I think it's really important to share the love. So much of writing or publishing is, is luck and timing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's working hard, but at the same time, you know, no one's going to give you a hand. Um, and I felt really alone when I was first joining the writing world, and so I wanted to make a place where people could connect with me personally at any time. I always answer tweets, I always answer emails, I always answer Tumblr asks and forum asks and emails, so I just want people to know that it doesn't have to be a solo journey. That's really nice. Oh, thanks. Is it, um, <laughs> do you check often for new comments to, to reply to or how, yeah, cause, yeah, yeah, I noticed that you reply, reply to everybody. I mean, the only times I don't reply is because I'm traveling and it's hard to, but like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, cho- I, as soon as I see it, I answer. I have this like obsessive zero inbox policy, so, oh, yeah, which is yeah. really not good for my productivity, but I need yeah. it to stay zero, <laughs> so I will answer right now. Yeah. Uh, have you ever wanted to write a book about marine biology or inspired by your previous life? You know, it's funny you ask that because like whenever I go into events, especially where there's like young boys, that's what they're all like, I want you to write a book about sharks. Uh, and it's yeah. like, yeah, I, I think the, the cool thing <laughs> about, right. yeah, well, the cool thing about marine biology is like I got to go everywhere. I got to go to so many places around the world and I don't, you know, all of those experiences fed into who I am, how I yeah. see the world. Um, like I know what it's like to live 
in minus 50 degree weather, like live in it. We were living in tents. Like I know what that's like. I can write that. So if I ever write yeah. a book that's really cold, I can, I can take those experiences and express them. So in some ways that's how I'm using it. I don't think I'll ever actually write a book about science. <laughs> Actual science is boring too. Oh, yeah. To be honest, it's not like Jurassic Park. I wish it was, I wish it was. Did you have to do a lot of research for your series, about, especially regarding the historical aspect? Um, yes, which in hindsight, had I known, I don't know that I would have done it, uh, especially because I <laughs> foolishly decided to set each book in a new city. So then I had to do more research uh, yeah. for every book. Um, and the second two weren't in English, so I, I, I like to use primary documents and read original texts from the time. So like. My husband's French, and I had to drag him along with me to Paris to translate all these old texts for me. <laughs> um, Egypt, that was, I just had to do what I could. <laughs> but it was a lot of work. I think it paid off. I think it brings a sort of reality to the books and the world. Um, and, but yeah, would I do that again? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> um, do you have any books coming out that you'd like to tell us about? I have oh, Truth Witch amazing. coming out. <laughs> Uh, January 6th of 2016, and that is um, sort of an Avatar The Last Airbender meets Assassin's Creed. Oh, cool. Two things cool. I love very much. <laughs> well, thank you so oh much gosh, for thank speaking you. with us. Thank you.